RDOF as a device manager for the Linux kernel. As the successor of DEVFSD and Hotplug, RDOF primarily manages device nodes in the slash dev directory. At the same time, RDOF also handles all user space events raised while hardware devices are added into the system or removed from it, including firmware loading as required by certain devices. Overview Unlike traditional Unix systems, where the device nodes in the slash dev directory have been a static set of files, the Linux RDOF device manager dynamically provides only the nodes for the devices actually present on the system. Although DEVFS used to provide similar functionality, Greg Krohartman cited a number of reasons for preferring RDOF over DEVFS. RDOF supports persistent device naming, which does not depend on, for example, the order in which the devices are plugged into the system. The default RDOF setup provides persistent names for storage devices. Any hard disk is recognized by its unique file system ID, the name of the disk and the physical location on the hardware it is connected to. RDOF executes entirely in user space, as opposed to DEVFS's kernel space. One consequence is that RDOF moved the naming policy out of the kernel and can run arbitrary programs to compose a name for the device from the device's properties, before the node is created. There, the whole process is also interruptible and it runs with a lower priority. The RDOF, as a whole, is divided into three parts, library library that allows access to device information. It was incorporated into the system software bundle. User space daemon new DEVD that manages the virtual slash dev. Administrative command line utility other than for diagnostics. The system gets calls from the kernel via int link socket. Earlier versions used hot plug, adding a link to themselves in hot plug D default with this purpose. Operation. RDOF is a generic kernel device manager. It runs as a daemon on a Linux system and listens to events the kernel sends out if a new device is initialized or a device is removed from the system. The system provides a set of rules that match against exported values of the event and properties of the discovered device. A matching rule will possibly name and create a device node and run configured programs to set up and configure the device. RDOV rules can match on properties like the kernel subsystem, the kernel device name, the physical location of the device, or properties like the device's serial number. Rules can also request information from external programs to name a device or specify a custom name that will always be the same, regardless of the order devices are discovered by the system. In the past a common way to use RDOV on Linux systems was to let it send events through a socket to HAL, which would perform further device-specific actions. For example, HAL would notify other software running on the system that the new hardware had arrived by issuing a broadcast message on the DBUS IPC system to all interested processes. In this way, desktops such as GNOME or K-Desktop Environment 3 could start the file browser to browse the file systems of newly attached USB flash drives and SD cards. By the middle of 2011 HAL had been deprecated by most Linux distributions as well as by the KDE. GNOME and XFCE desktop environments, among others. The functionality previously embodied in HAL has been integrated into RDOV itself, or moved to separate software such as RDISCs and UPOA. History, RDOV was introduced in Linux 2.5. The Linux kernel version 2.6.13 introduced or updated a new version of the UVend interface. A system using a new version of RDOV will not boot with kernels older than 2.6.13 unless RDOV is disabled and a traditional slash dev directory is used for device access. In April 2012, RDOV's code base was merged into the system source tree. In October 2012, Linus Torvalds criticized K Sivers's approach to RDOV maintenance and bug fixing related to firmware loading, stating, Yes, doing it in the kernel is more robust. But don't play games, and stop the lying. It's more robust because we have maintainers that care, and because we know that regressions are not something we can play fast and loose with. If something breaks, and we don't know what the right fix for that breakage is, we revert the thing that broke. So yes, we're clearly better off doing it in the kernel. Not because firmware loading cannot be done in user space. 
but simply because our dove maintenance since Greg gave it up has gone downhill. In 2012, the Gen 2 Linux project created a fork of systems out of code base in order to avoid dependency on the systemd architecture. The resulting fork is called UD and it makes our dove functionality available without systemd. A stated goal of the project is to keep UD independent of any Linux distribution or init system. The Gen 2 project describes UD as follows. UDV is a fork of system UDV with the goal of obtaining better compatibility with existing software such as OpenRC and Upstart, older kernels, various tool chains and anything else required by users and various distributions. On May 29, 2014, support for firmware loading through UDV was dropped, as it has been decided that it is kernel's task to load firmware. Two days later, Lennart Poetring suggested this patch be postponed until KDBUS starts to be utilized by UDOV. At that point, it is planned to switch UDOV to use KDBUS as the underlying messaging system, and to get rid of the user space to user space and link based transport. Authors, UDOV was developed by Greg Krohartman and Kay Sivers, with much help from Damstkloff, among others. References External links Ardov source code, discussion of Ardov rules, Ardov a Euro a user space implementation of DEVFS by Greg Krohartman, PYSDM, introduction to device management, LWN article about DEVTMPFS, MDEV documentation, UDV project.